So, uh, we are continuing with the draw texturing, in fact friction draw texturing because we are looking at uh, the device which can do the twisting at a faster pace, but using friction and we tried to understand the concept where it should be possible to reduce the slip in the friction texturing system during twisting and that was called the concept of posit torque system and what we introduced was a twister angle. And we realized that the twister angle should not be equal to 90 degrees. If it is close to helix angle, then the slip can be reduced. So, but we cannot really guarantee that the twister angle would be equal to helix angle. If it is not equal to helix angle, then there is going to be some difference in the vector, the force vector and so the surface movement of the disc direction and the direction of the surface movement of uh, yarn will not be the same and if they are not same that much you can expect a slip. So, particularly people were quite interested in handling a fine denier material because when you have a micro denier which means this individual filament denier are less than 1, uh, that means that there is going to be more broken filaments, chances of more broken filaments are going to be there. And so, we were looking at something which could have probably more control on the twist than what we have. What we have is a control based on the tension and the angle of wrap. Beyond that, we do not have a positive control in what we call as the stack disc friction texturing. So that is the question. So then uh, this new newer concept came as a NIP controlled vector drives. That is you are passing the yarn through a NIP and that becomes an issue that how do we control the NIP or how do we produce a nip in a friction texturing system. So, our discs at the moment which we were dealing they have no nip and there is slip. What you have is something like this. And the angle of wrap, no nip, so slip and that is what we have. So, what can we do? A system was proposed called the Beltex. The Beltex obviously it appears that there are belts. Have you uh, seen in anywhere people in villages or otherwise twisting the yarn with hands, right? So, this hand if, if the yarn is somewhere here and you are twisting like this, so you are actually providing a nip. So, there are two sides and in between two surfaces and in between there is some yarn. So, this 
Belltech system wanted to utilize that concept that you actually provide a nip where for example, two surfaces are moving and the third surface also. So, there are three surfaces now we are looking at. So, this is a belt. Let us say this is the yarn. And so, what we have there is a let us say a belt which can be let us say upper belt which is moving on top of the yarn and there is a bottom belt which is moving below the yarn and the yarn is let us say moving in this direction. So, this is almost creating this type of a environment and what is this? Let us say at this point if somebody wants to understand what is happening to the yarn. So, what you have is a force diagram of some kind of this. So, you have let us say bottom belt and upper belt speeds or velocities, if that is controlled then you have a resultant force acting on the yarn which is going to take it forward all right. So, now you have that means if you have two surfaces moving like this. So, there is a chance that you have a force which is acting in the direction of the diagonal of this parallelogram. And so, you have a condition where there is nip, nip. So, and how is this all being decided? This is being decided by this angle. It is the belt crossing angle. Let us say this belt crossing angle is 2 phi. So, what can we do? We can change the speed of the belt. speed of the belt can be changed. Let us say this speed was B1 and this speed is B2 in a generalized system. So, these speeds can be changed. Maybe you would like to keep B1 is equal to B2. Otherwise, what will happen? The direction of the frictional force will be different than the direction of the yarn. And therefore, the other thing also which is there is that the yarn is actually moving in the center of these belt crossing, crossing belts. So, that this is half of 2 phi. That means, actually this is 2 phi by 2 and that is phi. Okay. So, you have half belt crossing angle as phi that means, other half is also phi. So, both are phi and therefore, the yarn is moving in the center and if B 1, B 2 are same then obviously, the direction of the force that is going to be exerted on the yarn also will be along the direction of the yarn movement. So, what do we notice here? That you have two parameters, 
one is the speed of the belt let us say it is b and you have another parameter which is the belt crossing angle half of the best that also can be changed so if you change the belt crossing angle your component of the frictional force magnitude will also change and of course you change the b this magnitude will also change so these are two parameters now you have so how is it different from the disc yes we have a nip that's one difference but the other difference is the yarn in this case was moving after wrapping over the disc surface and which was considered essential otherwise we may not get any frictional force and the torque so this was considered necessary and what is happening here the yarn is passing vertically the plane of the belt is another plane plane of the other belt is another plane so you have three plane surfaces one is the bottom belt plane surface other the surface of the inner surface of the top belt and the plane of the thing all of them are parallel in this situation all of them are parallel in this case the surfaces surface of the disc let's say at any point the plane at which motion versus this were actually at some angle right if it was no twisted angle they were 90 degrees if there is a twisted angle they are different so they are different planes and in top of on top of that you had what we call as the wrap angle and we understood that the tension and the wrap angle together will play some role in deciding what will be the normal force and therefore what will be frictional force in this case what will be the effect of increasing tension let's say on torque what should be if we increase the tension so we have some control so what will be the effect of that on the twist so remember so we have belt moving in the same plane parallel plane not same plane motion of the belt surface motion is parallel say to the plane in which the yarn is moving versus the other surface so they are all parallel you are increasing tension what will happen the tension in the yarn will increase but on the torque will the torque increase the torque increase yes why will the torque increase yeah so where is the normal where is the component so we have a situation like this yarn is moving or let us say this was a one of the belts the yarn is moving like this and you want to increase tension in this tension in this let's say it is t2 of course and this is t1 on this side because this is moving so you want to increase t1 whatever effect have has happened will happen whatever they are in the parallel how will you get the normal force if this was simple 
not simple but anyway it was simple in the sense that when you increase the tension then the normal force would be generated and there also we said if you actually move it parallel and the angle of wrap is 0, if psi naught is 0 and you increase the tension what will happen to the twist, no twist. So here again you have a parallel surface which is one surface which is in the same plane and in the next plane parallelly something is moving and you increase tension in this. So how will the twist come? So you will not get twist. If this remains the situation that three things are moving in parallel planes, you will not get the twist. But in this hand spinning system, you still had twist. What's the catch? So the catch is you are actually putting pressure independent of tension. So you are providing, you should be providing a normal force which would be acting let us say from if these are the belts, so something on the top which is perpendicular to the planes of all the three at the nip point some pressure must be put. How do we put the pressure is a different story but you must put the pressure. If you do not put the pressure then there is no twist because tension cannot provide normal force. That is one difference that you have between the nip type of a material which is called the belt, belt pair of belts versus the, the disc. Then also we said that we have speed B with which one belt is moving, another belt also is moving with the speed B and then you also have angle of uh, cross crossing angle and so based on this you have the direction in which the yarn will be pushed yarn cannot remain stationary. So the result of this is if both the things move continuously, both the things move continuously, then something will move also because of this reason. So if somebody says that in the other case we had d by y ratio, in this case we can say b by y ratio but important thing is y can the y which is the speed of the yarn be independent In the earlier case of the disc without any doubt the yarn could be moved at the speed of your desire because there was no nip. So you could independently vary the speed of the yarn and the speed of the disc and then calculate whatever you could calculate or interpret the twist which is being inserted. But in this case, this speed will be decided by this or this. 
So once you have fixed the belt speed and you have also fixed the belt crossing angle which is the adjustment on the machine and then the speed. After that, it will be very difficult for you to change the speed of the yarn. Particularly if the normal force is also reasonable. The force has to be high enough to ensure no slip. After all, you are coming here for no slip. So, you can automatically understand if there is no slip, some of the problem that we were worried about all the time can be handled. Now, this becomes an interesting thing and therefore, somebody also made some statement that quality of the textured yarn produced by a belt tech system does not depend on BYY. You say it should depend on BYY because there is something called a B, something called a Y. But yes, you can say, but the Y is being controlled. So, you have a control, good control, but this of course is the situation. So, you have a B by Y ratio, effect of tension we have understood and we have also tried to give indication as to how the yarn is getting twisted, it is because of the normal force that is being provided externally. Right? So, you can always adjust the planes coming close without hitting the belts are flexible and so you can do this like your hand is flexible. But one thing which can always happen that although the yarn speed has been decided by phi and b in an ideal situation, when these two have been fixed, it should move, yarn should move at the speed only. If it does not, because you can always do whatever you want to do. And sometimes it can also happen that it is a draw texturing machine, you have to put some tension for drawing and when you are trying to do adjustment with the yarn, diameter, denier and so on and so forth changing, you may have a situation where yarn is moving at a speed which is not y, but let us say some other speed which may be lower or higher than this. In such situation, if you are moving at a higher speed, you are going to be dragging the yarn through the nip. So, yarn pushing is less and you are withdrawing more. Of course, the nip and still belt and a softer material you may be able to pull, but then what you do? damage because still the belt is going to be stronger than the yarn and so there can be quality issues because you are dragging. If you are moving slowly that will be called pumping in that you are pumping more yarn than you are taking up. So, tensions there will be reducing and it may not harm the yarn, but that is one interesting part that we have. So, how do we control all this? We say well, we have uh, control on the B, hopefully they are synchronized both the belts so that their speeds are same. The direction also is maintained once, then you start the machine and then you can run. 
So, what have you understood is that there is a possibility of getting a positive control on twist or a more control on twist despite dragging and pumping, we can still say that there is a much more control and it is still friction tensioning. And because of friction tensioning, therefore, the speed of twisting is still no limit, you can twist as much as you want. So, you are in the same zone, but you are now controlling better. So, what is important is that you see the development of a small thing called a twisting. So, people went on from normal pin twisting to friction, then to positorque and then still not satisfied thinking about a nip controlled twisting system. Of course, the machines have to be adjusted, the positions have to be done, how long is the belt going to be there? Obviously, the belt is an endless belt, right? So, this endless belt, endless belt moving in some, if, if this is the kind of one of the profiles if you see, so there may be two rollers and the belt is moving, one of the belt may move like this, right? So, So, this belt is moving, endless belt is moving and it is moving and it is endless, therefore, it must be flexible. So, the, the material is such that it can bend and again recover and depending upon at what speed are you going to be running, this material will be tortured also. So, you, you cannot keep one is just running around and then you say no, you bend, open, bend, open, bend, open in a cyclic manner. So, obviously, material properties are going to be tested. Fortunately, textiles are good materials, belts are made with the reinforced textile systems, you can still make them. So, these belts are flexible, but when you move the machine at a faster speed, now you are looking at if everything is in your control, so you may be running at 1000, 1000 plus meters per minute, so there will be vibrations. The disc was a rigid body, there also you felt that there can be vibrations and because of vibration contacts can be lost. Although this is nip, but there is vibrations, if there are vibrations, anything can happen, the, one of the belt can move on one direction, the other may move the other direction and so you can have some gap at some stage, much less, but you cannot say no, that is one. Other is the temperature can rise, so after all you are still dependent on the surface of the, the frictional surface of the belt or, the, or between the belt and the yarn that you have coefficient of friction, will that change? with temperatures. So, that means, if you are going to be having a situation when temperature will keep on rising, because the machines are supposed to run 24 7, then you have to have some way to ensure that the temperature does not rise too much. So, one of course, is because there is going to be this kind of a roller, which may be conducting enough thermally, it can take away or in addition you may deploy in case you find that the temperature rises quite large, maybe you can deploy some air jet just to cool them. This rise of temperature can depend on this, if the belt is thicker and less thick, both of them when they bend and open, the total deformation from one side to the other is going to be much more expected in the other case, 
but that again becomes a selection issue should we take a thicker belt which will have less vibrations but you still have to bend you can't obviously think of taking the making the belt floating area very large it has to be small because there are so many spindles which have to fit it and the twisting has to happen so the small belts small things so that's one and vibration can also cause one of this temperature rise the other is you might just have one of the edges of the belt may touch the other edge of the other belt which are moving in different directions in an ideal situation the belts don't touch each other they touch only the yarn but what is the diameter of the yarn a 40 denier yarn what is the diameter of yarn so you actually cutting very close and if there is a vibration you can always touch so one always has to worry about what will be the thickness thickness would mean rigidity rigidity means more temperature less vibrations and vice versa so you have to look at these kind of parameters because they are going to be flexible but no doubt it's a step much ahead in the friction texturing if you can roll these things you will have much more versatility of the machine that you can go for higher denier lower denier finer denier microfine denier type of yarn for texturing so then so the yarn is not touching the belt at one point it is moving across a contact length let's say l if the contact length is more or less will it affect if it's a point contact instead of a belt some two wires are running and between the yarn is running what says you have a belt which has got a width so it is easy to understand that this will provide a better nip and a better contact and less slip and so at some pay this l itself may be a parameter which everybody may not be able to change but the people who are making the belts can be change they can change if this is your phi and this is the width of the belt hoping the width of the both the belts are same and this is also phi so what should be the value or the expression for l in terms of this and this can you give me that i like to have some values some expressions can you give me that all right so whatever you give me i'll write down okay so what did you say l is equal to w i have not heard cos 5 cos 5 w upon cos 5 Sign. Anyone else? Double oh, cos two sine divided by uh, sine side. W cos two sine two phi divided by sine phi. Sine phi. Quite complex. 
<laughs> Tough, right? One thing you can assume, not assume, you must expect that phi is not necessarily equal to 45 degrees. Why should it be? It is a flexible variable. So, I am not accepting any of these values. You can go back and uh, keep it in your notebooks, secure and safe, the expression. So, it is a beautiful system where some of the problems of the friction texturing, older disk texturing, friction disk texturing were handled pretty nicely. But the limitation would be the vibration and the temperature rise and therefore, there can be aberration of the belt also and maybe the frictional properties change with time and temperature and so either you will keep replacing the belt as quickly as possible and what the belt will be, belt probably would have one surface which is the frictional surface, other is a supporting composite structure which has the textile. So, top surface may be let us say a polyurethane surface or something like that, other is a composite flexible composite which obviously can move. So, how do you reduce the flexibility? So, some people suggested see this is what is called thinking and keep developing things. Can we have one belt and the other a rigid rod which moves, rotates? So, it will create a nip of a different kind, but yarn can be in between. So, you have a belt. And you can probably consider having a rod which provides a nip. Can we have? So, this is uh, just an idea you can think about. Why are we talking about that? That if you can reduce the vibrations and have similar things happening, similar things not the same, then maybe you could uh, reduce the thing, the vibration. So, people did think about such kind of elements also, but not necessarily they were successful. But I uh, leave it to you to also design any system that you can think of where you will reduce the vibrations using a belt and provide a nip and provide a nip. All right. Any system. Okay. We go a little further while people thinking. So, this thing that we are discussing now that is not going to be your solution, your solution will be different. So, people also thought about another system which we call the ring text instead of a belt. So, instead of using a belt they said we can use ring and what is the system would? That there is a ring, a pair of rings. If the pair of rings contact, they can also provide at some point forces of this nature and they said this system is better, we can make it rigid and what else can you do? Instead of the belt moving in this angle, we can change this angle by just changing 
the overlap between the rings. If you change the overlap, move this ring to this side, this ring to the other side, you will see this angle will change. You believe that? So they said our system is better than the Beltex. Why is it better? Because when you change the angle, the whole drive assembly has to change its position, right? So the belt has to be driven. So something is driving the belt. So that position also must change. Of course, you can change and they said we can change, but that is more complex. He said this is simple, just in the same line, you change the center of the discs, your angle will change. As far as the speed of the ring is concerned, they are rotating. At that point, what are the speed? That can be changed and if you synchronize, both the welds, both the rings will move with the same speed, which could be, let us say, R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R. And you can have a concept of yarn moving R by Y. The question that may be interesting to ask at this point is, how do you move a ring? The belt had two, you know, drive mechanisms. One may be positively driven, other may be just following it or both of them could be positively driven. Then how do you rotate rings? I leave this at this point just for you to think that there is another principle which is also dip controlled vector drive principle, vector because you are having various directions of velocities and therefore the frictional force and then you can change the crossing angle. Let us say this is also phi and this is also phi. So, you have 2 phi as the ring crossing angle at some point. So, it has a control and so it is a nip and everything else could be similar to the belt X system, but how do we rotate them? If you understand what is the ring, it is not a risk and you have to rotate. So, you can think about it when we meet next time, we can move further from here.